So, uh, Neil, thank you so much for agreeing to discuss your book as part of the celebrations of the 50th uh, anniversary of FYP. And uh, I hope that you're going to confirm my views, which some of which were formed <laughs> by you, which is that uh, Leo Strauss is a predominant figure in the mid-third of the 20th century uh, in English language political philosophy, although his roots are obviously in Europe and uh, much further engaged. And uh, from studying your book, I know that many of the same concerns that we have in FYP are present in his work and that the same major works that we have made so foundational in our program are ones he considers. So, could you say something about your journey relative to Leo Strauss and FYP? Uh, thank you, Tom. The um, value of being able to take a look at Leo Strauss, and uh, my book is really just an introduction to his thought, is that uh, he's a very controversial figure, particularly in the context of American politics. He's often seen to be aligned with various forces on the right or in the conservative camp of American politics, but he's also had a huge influence on uh, American education, and particularly the formation of what are called great books programs, and the foundation program can also in some sense be thought of as part of that. And so I think we'll have an opportunity in our conversation to reflect a little bit about ways in which Leo Strauss outlines some of the same concerns that have driven the foundation program, but also some really significant ways in which the whole standpoint of the foundation program and the way that it understands its work is in contrast and often in real intellectual conflict with what goes on in Leo Strauss's thought. So I think that helps us have a better understanding of what we're doing in the foundation program by reflecting on another approach to the same basic uh, educational project. From my reading of your book, but also from many conversations we've had, the landmarks that uh, we consider and that you have considered in your book, particularly we would want to mention, I think, Plato, Machiavelli, Nietzsche, and Heidegger. I think that's a very big part of what you're doing. And I should say to anyone who comes to the virtual book club that We've had tutors who are very influenced by Leo Strauss and some possible actual adherents. And he had a huge following in the United States and produced a massive number of schools where his thinking still is dominant. We uh, are very different in one respect, and I know your book touches on this and helps very, that um, there is a potential exoteric and esoteric reading of the same text that we consider very much not esoterically. But I'd just like to add that it's still a living issue in Foundation Year program because yesterday I heard a lecture by Kyle Fraser on Pica, Pico della Mirandola and the exoteric aspect of his thinking is fundamental. Is it appropriate to speak that way about Plato? So one of the things that Leo Strauss does in, the, in his scholarly work is to suggest that a lot of modern scholarship is naive about the way it approaches text and that a hidden or esoteric uh, teaching is at work in the fundamental works that we look at, works like Plato's uh, Republic or uh, Machiavelli's Prince, and that we need to unlock those works by getting at these hidden teachings. And that's a different approach to how to read and interpret the uh, past. And that's one of the things that we can also talk about uh, when we get together to have our full discussion, to try to have a sense of how to approach texts and the, uh, what one thinks is going on in text, and also what one thinks is going on in education. Because there's a way in which, in Strauss's account of things, the job of a teacher is to give students access to this hidden knowledge that they lack, that they don't have. 
And I think that the foundation program almost looks at things the other way around, which is to say, instead of the glass being empty or the student being empty, needing a kind of hidden wisdom, the foundation program, I think, has the view that students are full and they have a wisdom within them. And our job is to give them access to that through being able to look at the text and the development of thought that we engage in in the foundation program. So I think some fundamental questions about pedagogy, about reading, are all at work in thinking about Leo Strauss and his particular approach to the intellectual tradition. So I'd just like to emphasize again how timely your book is and how it deals with issues that we're grappling with every day. I said yesterday we heard a lecture by Kyle Fraser on PICO, now a dominant feature of our curriculum, but on Wednesday, Simon Crew will be talking about Machiavelli. And you have made it clear to me, and it's also very much a part of your book, that Machiavelli is a pivotal figure. Could you say something about that? In relation to Leo Strauss, I mean, of course. Yes, so in Strauss's account of things, Machiavelli is the hinge around which the entire Western tradition turns, because Machiavelli is understood to really be the originator of a modern standpoint that breaks with an ancient and med medieval account of what politics is, what morality is, and what the human condition is. And in doing so, Machiavelli opens up a new world, the modern world, which in Strauss's view ends in nihilism, ends in crisis. And his experience as a German Jew living in the midst of the crisis of Weimar Germany, the rise of Hitler, all was a kind of living testimony to Strauss's account of the modern world as an era that ends ultimately in nothing. <laughs>